I drove into this neighborhood and I thought, where are all the office buildings? Where is this huge foundation that I thought existed? And I walk up to the steps where Kathy gave me the address and I walk into the house and, you know, Tim is sitting there and Kathy and I think it was like around lunchtime and I remember the smells. It was very clearly that, you know, people were cooking good food in here. And just thinking like this whole foundation I grew up on, thinking that it was huge and that there were departments and things like that. And it's just Kathy and Tim is, are sitting here <laughs> doing all this work. And um, so I, yeah, I interviewed with Kathy and then with Sally and everything went super well. And that was about two years ago. Hey everybody, welcome to the Wise Traditions Podcast, sponsored by the Weston A. Price Foundation for Wise Traditions in Food, Farming, and the Healing Arts. I'm your host, Total Labrada Gore, and you are in for a special treat today. This is bonus episode number 37, and it is a sneak peek behind the scenes of the foundation. How do they provide all of the valuable resources, videos, pamphlets, links, and information that we need? Listen to our conversation recently held in their office in D.C., You'll hear from Celia McGovern, the one who was just speaking a moment ago, Tim Boyd, and Kathy Kramer. They are rock stars to my mind. Tell me, you guys, how many people are on staff here with the Weston Price Foundation? Well, we have uh, three full-time employees that work in the office, and then one full-time employee that works remotely. So... Four people and Sally, so that's five, right? Yeah, that's right. Um, But Sally is actually a volunteer. Oh, wow. The yeah. president is a volunteer? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. So what do you do, Celia? Uh, well, I do a lot of different things. Um, I'm the, usually the first to answer the phone. Um, so uh, a lot of people call in um, you know, and ask for our different departments, and I have to <laughs> let them know that we only have uh, three different departments, me, Tim, or Kathy. <laughs> um, we really try to answer questions on the phone. Um, usually I'll ask Tim if I don't know, or I'll ask Kathy, depending. And um, and then when we can't answer questions here in the office, we refer them to Sally. So um, that's kind of my first line of duty. Um, I do uh, outreach coordinating, so that's what it's called, I guess. Um, a lot of the social media, um, setting up exhibits, you know, trying to promote us to the outside world. <laughs> and then mostly, I would also say, like, administrative assistant. I do a lot of office work for um, Kathy. You know, um, when you become a member, I send out your new member packet. You know, I answer emails and uh, I would say typical office work. Yeah, so kind of um, like all of us here at Jack of All Trades, you know, we kind of all have a bunch of duties that we do throughout the day. And it's such a small staff and such a cozy space. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's really nice. Yeah, I'm uh, stationed in the living room and Kathy's back here near the kitchen. I don't know. I guess you would call Tim in the family room. <laughs> but it is it is great and we, you know, we cook, we can cook our lunches and especially when Kathy stays late, she cooks her dinner and stuff like that. Oh, so, how cozy. Yeah. This is not <laughs> at all nice. like a regular office building or anything. No, it's not just at all. It's a cozy space. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Which is no cubicles. No cubicles, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Tim, what do you do? I also do several things. I try and help uh, Celia and Kathy with all the, the questions that come in by email and phone. And we do get all kinds of questions. Mm-hmm. I was looking at some of the more amusing examples like uh, how do you keep ticks off your dog or <laughs> Do you, can, can you buy ultra-pasteurized milk here? Do you have alligator grease? What color is pig milk? Ah. Uh, or someone was telling us they tried to skin chicken feet. They were, they were asking how to skin chicken feet. They said yeah. a farmer said that they tried it with a blowtorch once, but they don't recommend it. <laughs> so, yeah, we get a lot of interesting calls. <laughs> yeah, yeah we, 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 we have some laughs. Um, I also do most of the shipping, and I do the uh, book and video reviews. I've noticed that you do those reviews, and I think, when do you find time to read all these books? Well, it's the perfect job for me because reading is something I enjoy doing, and I do a lot of it just at home, evenings or weekends. Uh, I do some here at work if, if everything else is slow, but... Um, 
I have a lot of fun with it, read a lot of interesting stuff. Of course, I try and make them interesting and, and attention grabbing. Um, my, my main purpose is to make them educational. And if they're not interesting and, or, or at least entertaining in some way, then nobody's going to read them. And if nobody reads them, then they're not educational. But the thing is, you're reading so we don't have to. Yeah. <laughs> or we can we see can read less, yeah. if we want to. We'll yeah, be like, okay, yeah. what he's yeah. talking about, that this book is about, intrigues me, but I might not have picked it up if I didn't see the review in the journal. Right. Do you also post the reviews online or no? Yes, they're all online. And that's what you were saying earlier, Celia, yeah. that we can find a lot of resources on the website, even how to like. And that's one of the other Skin things the I do is, is post all of the new information on the yeah. website. All of our journals, all our journal articles get posted online. Really? Tim is also know. our tech guy. Okay, <laughs> I tech see. Department. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> tech department. Tech department. I like it how the department, I, I liked it when you said earlier, there was the you department, the Kathy, and the Tim. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so what motivates you all here to do what you're doing? Well, I think kind of going back to what we were talking about at lunch, it's, I, I grew up on the diet since I, or Weston Price, knowing about the foundation since I was about uh, 11, 10 or 11. And I feel really lucky. My mom used to be a chapter leader. So I kind of grew up on that. And I remember always telling my friends, you know, why I never got sick or, <laughs> um, you know, just kind of different things about the diet. And everyone thought I was so crazy. All my, good thing I had a, a, you know, I had a lot of self-confidence because, <laughs> because a lot of my friends would be like, oh, it's just Celia talking about fat again or something like that. But <laughs> I'd be like, you wait one day and this will come out as an actual truth. You wait, I, I'll eat butter and you eat margin and we'll see what happens. <laughs> and now it's so funny after college I have so many friends that are like wow yeah I just started a high fat diet or you know I just started adding fermented foods and I'm like you know I'm not gonna be that person but I <laughs> but I want to be <laughs> and say I told you so exactly. you know it's starting to be it's starting to come out more and I think um when Kathy Kathy had uh, spoke to my mom about them needing some help here at the office because it was just her and Tim at the time and so my mom called me and I just jumped on that and I said, can, you know, can I come work for you and help you? And, um, I was just telling Kathy yesterday, my first impression, I drove, I drove into this neighborhood and I thought, where are all the office buildings? Where is this huge foundation that I thought existed? And I walk up to the steps where Kathy gave me the address and I walk into the house and, you know, Tim is sitting there and Kathy, and I think it was like around lunchtime and, I remember the smells. It was very clearly that, you know, people were cooking good food in here. And just thinking, like, this whole foundation I grew up on, thinking that it was huge and that there were departments and things like that. And it's just Kathy and Tim is, are sitting here <laughs> doing all this work. And um, so, I yeah, I interviewed with Kathy and then with Sally, and everything went super well. And that was about two years ago. Yeah, and Whoa. I've loved it ever since. Yeah, it's been great. Now, how many members are a part of the Weston Price Foundation? It's around 14,000 right now, did she so. say? yeah. Wow, so, so this small group of people is helping get the word out to all these members about mm -hmm. good food, and then, but somebody else must lend you a hand to get all this stuff going. Who's, who's your go-to? We well, yeah, we have a lot of consultants. Mm -hmm. um, we, we've got a, an outfit which helps with our conferences. They do all the, the heavy lifting on the conferences. Uh, we have printer people who do the printing for us. Of course, we have a lot of volunteers. The chapters are basically volunteers. Mm -hmm. uh, someone uh, who does research for our shopping guide yeah. um, and updates that every year. But it's neat. I'm, I'm going to zero in on the volunteers because I think a lot of us benefit from this diet, but we don't think there's anything to do besides eat the good food but what do the volunteers do for example oh you want to answer <laughs> they're there basically to help us help other people find local foods in their in their specific areas grass-fed meats um organic produce um most specifically grass-fed meats and raw milk raw mm -hmm. dairy so they just they basically volunteer to help us help others in their area 
Fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's a nice network of Mm -hmm. people. I know, because I'm a chapter leader in D.C., that we try to make a resource list Mm -hmm. so people can find where are the farms delivering in my area, where are the farmer's markets, where are the restaurants I might be able to go to, or even holistic doctors or dentists. So I like that we're all working together. Yeah, the chapter leaders do a lot, and especially them living in those areas, they know so much more about where holistic doctors are and things like that. We don't really have, again, there's just three of us here in the office, we don't really have the resources to put together and upkeep a list of holistic doctors or dentists all over the country. So we do rely a lot on our chapter leaders for that kind of information. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And Tim, tell me your story. How did you come to work here? Well, I was actually doing volunteer work myself. The Washington area has food drops around the area, and I was helping with, I was kind of taking charge of the one in the Falls Church area, and one of the previous office workers here went to that drop, and we got to know each other a little, and through that person I found out about an opening here uh, to come and work, and that worked well with my schedule at the time, so I uh, started here part-time, and that quickly became became whole-time, <laughs> full-time, and uh, I've, I've been having fun ever since. How long ago was that? Uh, it was around nine years ago. So again, I mentioned that this place feels quiet. Do you, mm-hmm. <laughs> do yeah. you all um, listen to music, or do you just kind of keep it this way. I like the silence. I'm not complaining. Yeah, I think the atmosphere is great. Um, It's usually pretty quiet here. We all have pretty much the same work ethic. So it's, you know, we have fun. We have good conversations, but Mm -hmm. we get a lot done uh, considering how, you know, just three of us here uh, turn out a lot of work. Yeah. And just the environment is so, is so positive. Yeah. We kind of all help each other out or we all kind of laugh if we don't know the answers to things because, you know, even if we do send out the journal and do all that stuff, sometimes, you know, we don't necessarily know the answers to all the questions because we're here trying to do all the office work and we don't really listen to music or anything like that. I think we prefer silence. We get a lot more done that way. And Kathy and I, I was telling Kathy yesterday, I thought it was funny because I always get so worried about getting into the office, like getting in early or staying late or just trying to get in a lot of hours and really it has nothing to do with Sally telling me I need to come in or Kathy or me being worried that Kathy's going to yell at me it's more like oh my gosh there's so much work to get done all the time right I need to be here (laughs) you know and but the thing is is that Kathy and you know Sally more so they she really trusts us to do to get our work done and things like that and you know, just such a generous, wonderful person that I really want to get everything done and do it well. So. Oh, that's fun when you're motivated yeah. because you believe in the mission and right. you feel like the leadership trusts you to do your mm-hmm. job and to do it well. You're almost more motivated to give more and I time. Think, yeah, I yeah. think that's how kind that's, of we all are. That is how it works. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so. Now, how often does Sally come in? Uh, she comes in every other week, um, every other Wednesday, and we sit down and have our lunch and our meeting. Yeah. And sometimes we speak to her on the phone and uh, correspond a lot through email. So, Tim, you've been here longer than Celia. So let me ask you, how has the foundation grown since you've started? How have things changed? It has grown quite a bit. I I don't remember exactly what the uh, uh, membership was when I started, but I know it's several thousand more now than it was. Um, When we started here, we had plenty of room really in this house for for our library and and all our journals and paper and so on. We're getting to the point now where we're pretty cramped here. (laughs) Um, So, and and a lot of that is just because there's so much more, you know, more mail that we send out to members and and we have more email and questions coming in. Kathy sits and kind of scrambles all day trying to keep up with all the email that comes in. Wow. It has gotten more busy. When I started, usually it was me and maybe one other person, usually Kathy. Uh-huh. Uh, and it has gotten to the point where Kathy and I alone just can't keep up anymore. We need Celia and, and sometimes a few other volunteers come in. 
So there's been growth in terms of numbers and papers that you send out and questions that you're fielding. What about the impact of the foundation? What do you think? Is it making a difference in this real food movement? Yeah, we, I, I forget the term we use, we're, we're kind of the, the secret catalyst behind a lot oh, of other silent, work. Yeah. yeah, the silent, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the silent origin of a lot of things like even the paleo, uh, even though we are different than the paleo, they got a lot of their ideas from us. Uh, all these fermented drinks like you can find kombucha in the store now, mm. that really pretty much started with us uh, raising awareness about the value yeah. of fermented products. Now there's a trend of broth, and I know mm-hmm. Sally wrote a book about broth, right? Yeah, yeah, that seems to be a really big thing. I remember, yeah, like growing up and friends would come over and say, what is that that mushroom thing in that jar? And I'd be like, oh, that's kombucha, you know? It's a <laughs> fermented drink we make, and it was so weird because, you know, my mom learned how to make it from Sally's nourishing traditions, and... I had never heard of it anywhere else other than, you know, my mom bringing it up from the cookbook and and now it's everywhere. I can go to any sort of store and get, a, you know, a decent uh, fermented drink. So, um, yeah, I think the foundation was really critical behind, you know, making all of that kind of come to light. Even if the foundation itself isn't cited as a source, I think it really was the beginning mm-hmm. of starting all of that kind of coming because you light. lived it you kind of lived yeah, it yeah where it was foreign and all of a sudden now it's like trendy right for right foods yeah. and mm-hmm. healing nourishing broth well another i think big difference and this goes back even before i started working here i started hearing about raw milk back in the 1990s and wanted to find it and back then i around here i could find nothing and since then all kinds of options have, have mm-hmm. cropped up all over the place. Now it's easy for me to find raw milk in this area. Mm-hmm. Yeah, another big yeah, another it's, big thing is the raw milk. Uh huh. Yeah, that has grown. And then the st- what they say the state state wise, the yeah. legality of raw milk has really um, been. I don't know how you would say it. Yeah, there's only a handful of states where it's completely illegal now. Which is different, yeah, than before. I'm not exactly sure the timeline on that, though. (laughs) That's really cool. That must make you feel very satisfied. Like, hey, we are getting something done here, right? Mm -hmm. That's Mm -hmm. exciting. Yeah. So, Kathy, now that you're done your meeting with Sally, I feel like the office here is a buzz with the phone (laughs) ringing. There's so much going on. How did you get started with the work in the foundation? Well, I was introduced to Sally's book, and then I worked for a doctor's office, and I met Sally. She came to have lunch with us. And so a little bit later, I called her, and I said, do you all need some help? Because I wanted help with the conference. She said, oh, no, we're fine. She had two people working for her at the time. This was about 12 years ago, getting ready for their conference. And two weeks later, she called me back and said, actually, we do need help. So I started working just stuffing envelopes a couple of days a week you know just a couple hours a week and um and it just kept growing now we have our own place that was in a in her house in a room in her house oh so now we're here we have our own place and i'm full time and so it's just gone from a little bit to a lot <laughs> what are some of your projects right okay. now well you know we have our shopping guide i i love our shopping guide i think it's um a really valuable tool I don't know if people realize how much is in there. It's 90 pages. It grows every year. And it lists all these different categories of foods. And in each category, it has best, good, and avoid. It has brand names. So if you're out there and you're trying to eat well, but you don't really want to spend a bunch of time on your uh, own research, then just get the $3 shopping guide. It's a great tool. And you don't have to be a member to get that. No, no. We sell a lot without, you know, to other people besides members so that's one thing we have um, we have our realmilk.com website I don't know a lot of people maybe don't know about that but it's a place where there's a lot of good information about the safety and the value of raw milk but also there's a whole section about what, how it's legal the legal status for each state and then also where you can get it in each state so we let farmers post for free on there if they have a raw milk product to post. Ah. that's a big service mm-hmm. um 
We also do, you know, we have our whole system of chapter leaders, 600 chapter leaders worldwide, about 10% outside of this country, mostly are in the U.S., and we support them with materials. Um, we send out announcements about meetings they're having. So it's a, that's a great system. And actually, that's how our reach is so much wider, is because we have these, like, Uber members who are out there doing the legwork, you know, and reaching uh, the places we can't get, you know, which is in their own neighborhoods and cities. So it's it's just a great service, and um, it's changing the world, really. <laughs> um, we also, we've been doing a lot with, well, we started our international project where we send people to another country to take the Western Price message there, and um, last year we sent uh, people to Kenya. We hope to do that, another project this year, if we have the funds. We also are involved with activism. You know, if there's something in your state that needs to be addressed, you, you know, if you call your senator or if you go to this hearing, it might help some, some food-related topic. So we send out emails about that. We Facebook about it. So we try to get our members involved in that, which our members are very active. You know, we have, um, I hear that at times people say, we were flooded with faxes or emails or whatever. So your, your members really respond. So that's great. Of course, we produce our journal. That's always a big project every quarter. I see it as a way. I love Nourishing Traditions Cookbook. I learned a lot, and this is a way to keep that going. You know, every quarter you learn more and more about. There's practical stuff. There's science, and you know, scientific articles. So I see that. We also have the soy suit, which has been going on a long time, trying to get soy out of the diet and and not seen as a health food. So we picked the Illinois prison as a place to show this is what happens when you feed people a lot of soy in their diet. People were getting sick, the same same problems, and they're all soy connected, soy related. And um, you know the same thing will happen in schools and nursing homes and hospitals where people are being fed soy, maybe not as quickly because they may not get as much as they do in the prisons. So that's been a long process and taken on different facets, so we're kind of at our next stage of that. And then our restaurant project, that's the newest and exciting one that should be launched this year, where our chapter leaders will be able to post restaurants and rate them according to, do they use bone broth, do they use ferment, do they serve fermented foods? Like we're, we'll have 12 different criteria mm-hmm. that they can get where we're going to have a spoon, where they can get a spoon for this, spoon for that. So you might have not a five-star restaurant, but a five-spoon restaurant or an eight-spoon <laughs> restaurant. So I'm really excited about that. When people are traveling or even when you're at home, you can look on there and find a restaurant. that, that And what I think, what we hope to happen, is going to get more restaurants to do those things. And will this be an app? Well, it'll be on our website. I don't, I think it'll be, no, I don't think it's an app. I think okay. it'll be... Something you log in as a member. I don't know the details exactly. Okay, okay. But we hope to, by the end of the year, have it launched. So when people become members, their money goes to these various things you've mentioned. Yeah, yeah. But you don't. You could just make a donation to the foundation, too. You don't have to be a member. You can just support the work any way you can, right? Yeah, and a lot of people are members, and then they donate a little more, or they donate another time a year. And then some people are not members and they donate. So yeah, we have we have people that in you know as a memorial donation for mm-hmm. a loved one. The loved one has said, you know, here's a nonprofit you can donate to. So it's different ways. But I think we have we do a lot considering most of our money is from those forty dollar membership checks. Like we mm-hmm. we get a lot done, I think, and and we'll do more. We you know we can. We promise that, like, we don't have this little nest egg of money somewhere. We're using it for the projects that people want. You know, I want these things to happen. Absolutely. That's fantastic. What you're doing sounds tremendous, and I think it's making a great impact on people today all over the world. Great. Thanks, Hilda. If you have benefited from the work of the foundation, would you consider a donation of any size? Right now, they are in the midst of a fundraising campaign, and they're counting on your support to continue the important life-saving work, really, of the foundation. They are working hard to get health information into everyone's hands. So just go to the website and click on the donate button on either sidebar. Thank you so much.